American foods that are banned in other countries. I'm an American and I want to check these videos out, man. What's some food that are banned in other countries that we still eat? So that's kind of a red flag off the bat, right? Um, because why y'all chose to not eat it? And why, why y'all got us eating it? Or why we got ourselves eating it? Um, yeah, man, before the video starts, smash the like button right now, subscribe if you're new. And let's get right into this video, man. Most Americans want to believe that the United States is the gold standard of clean food. Sure, but yeah. that belief may not hold up to scrutiny. Yeah, yeah, the McRib, bro. Come on, who eats McRibs? You probably eat McRibs, don't you? I know you eat a McRib. On sanitary practices and mass production to the addition of dangerous chemicals, countries have good reason to give the side eye to imported foods claiming to be USDA approved. That's Whoa. right. This week, we're talking about American foods that have been banned by other countries. Okay. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Food channel. Then leave a comment and tell us what other world food facts you would like to know more about. Now let's see how wrong the rest of the world really is. Skittles? Since the dawn of Skittles, there have been rumors about the dangers of eating them. Every one of us heard at least one classmate claim that the red ones make you sterile and the yellow ones, they give you cancer. Turns out... Who says that? <laughs> might be worse than that. First of all, your classmate wasn't wrong. The dyes known as yellow 5 and yellow 6 have been linked to hives and hyperactivity in children. Sweden and Norway have banned the candies out of concern. The European Union will most likely be banning Skittles at the end of the year having already swapped out some of the dye for more natural flavors. This is wow. because of something called titanium dioxide, which can be found making the colors pop across the rainbow. Research linked titanium dioxide to damaged DNA, which can lead to cancer. While Europe may be ahead of the Skittles awareness curve, America is quickly catching up. In May of 2021, the Environmental Working Group asked the FDA to categorize titanium dioxide as toxic. And yes, before you ask, right now the FDA says it's okay to consume some of that chemical compound. You can taste the rainbow, but <laughs> just in moderation. <laughs> California is home to an ongoing lawsuit against Mars Inc., the parent company of Skittles. Whoa. The lawsuit claims Skittles are not only toxic, but are unfit for human consumption. What the heck? So, maybe for now... I haven't eaten Skittles in a minute, but now I'm not going to. What the heck? It's safe. Just go have some Swedish fish instead. Yes, sir. Ever looked at a piece of... What? What's wrong with bread, bro? Crusty French baguette, be it in cartoon or in real life. But let's be honest, it was probably in the hands of Pepe Le Pew. And think, I can't make a sandwich with that. As great as we talk about the invention of sliced bread, a lot of European countries have actually banned much of what you'd find on America's wide, wide grocer shelves. That's because we make a lot of our bread not just with grain, but with a variety snack packs worth of additives, like azodicarbonamide for example, which helps bleach flour and strengthen dough. Fun fact about azodicarbonamide, it's also used in a spectrum of industrial products, including yoga mats. Mmm, downward dogs. The European Union is really against the idea of its citizens eating yoga mat material and has banned their use in food products. Pork, the other white meat, is a staple of American meats along with chicken, fish, and beef. From bacon to ham, hot dogs to pork chops, American meat eaters consume about 67 pounds of pig per person every year. Sweet, <laughs> my heart is stopping. Don't get us wrong, other nations indulge in swine just as much, if not more, than yeah. Americans. So yeah. why does Especially Koreans, oh my goodness. U.S. export scores of succulent bacon-bearing boars. Well, it turns out America adds a lot of chemicals during processing. Ractopamine in particular is used in many pig farms to raise porkier porkers. Ractopamine, which we put a dash of in a lot of foods, has been banned in 160 countries, which all consider the drug unsafe for human consumption. This in turn has led to a prohibition of pork exports across the world. The EU hasn't touched the stuff since outlawing ractopamine in 2009. China and Russia have been ractopamine-less since 2013. 
Maybe that's because ractopamine has the same effects as an intoxicant on humans and can cause tachycardia, headaches, and muscle spasms if consumed in large enough quantities. Whoa. But it is a small price to pay for a perfect piece of the pork. <laughs> what the heck, chicken, bro? What? What's going on? Hygiene in America often comes down to dousing stuff in a chlorine bath and calling it FDA approved. And chicken is no exception. Pathogen reduction treatments, or PRTs, refer to the use of different chemicals to destroy harmful microbes on raw meat. Somewhere along the line, American food regulators decided a quick chlorine shock was the best way to kill salmonella and other bacteria on uncooked poultry. Mmm, mmm, chlorine marinade. And chlorine marinade? Look, it's not that the EU is against taking a long gulp from the public pool now and then. That's why, you, I guess that's why you gotta wash your chicken. Wow, man. In fact, the, the more you know, right? Risks posed by chlorine consumption are relatively low. The bigger concern is that the chlorine baths are just an eye-burning band-aid on a larger problem. Mm. The tip of the beak, so to speak. They're worried that the PRTs are insufficient to deal with more than just the normal bacteria and don't get at a potential contamination from things like low-quality feed to unsanitary coops on farms. The EU called the chlorine rinse an easy fix, arguing no chemical rinse will ever remove all bacteria from meat heavily contaminated as a result of poor hygiene. That hurts extra to hear it from the French. <laughs> I mean, bro. Mountain. I mean, bro, you throw it in a fryer. It's pretty clean to me. <laughs> right? If you throw it in a fryer, bro, that heats up the germs and stuff. <laughs> How do I sound, bro? Oh, my goodness. Two is the closest any soft drink has come to being fully weaponized. What the heck? But did you know in Austria and Norway, the soda is outright banned? That's because Mountain Dew's- Yeah, I don't drink Mountain Dew. I, oh my goodness, I probably ain't drank Mountain Dew since I was like in elementary school, bro. You do not like, we just don't drink Mountain Dew. I don't know why people still do. Cher Chernobyl Radiant Hue comes from Tartrazine, also known as Yellow 5. And if your ADHD hasn't kicked in yet, You'll remember that color and number from the Skittles section earlier. It's been linked to headaches. I'm surprised he didn't mention Red 40 yet. For activity and the desire to be annoying to other people. Ironically, the qualities that make Mountain Dew a soda non gratis in other countries is exactly what the brand promotes. A frenetic, over-caffeinated lifestyle. Do the do. Baja Blast. Woo-hoo. And while you might be able to find Mountain Dew in Europe, it's going to hit a little different. That's because Whoa. Europe spent exactly two years in the 90s riding the dew before discontinuing it. What is being sold as Mountain Dew in the EU as a recipe closer to the original carbonated beverage, as created by Tennessee beverage bottlers Barney and Ollie Hartman in the 1940s. The original Mountain Dew was meant as a whiskey mixer, with a name coming from the affectionate Scottish term for moonshine. Really? It'll tickle your innards, is what the old ads used to read. No lies detected here. Yeah! <laughs> What's wrong with Little Debbie? Little Debbie has been providing Americans with comfort snack food since the 1960s. Yeah. With their variety of zebra cakes, star uh. crunches, nutty bars, fudge rounds, and cosmic Ooh. brownies. Mm -hmm. But their big claim to fame, mm -hmm. as anyone who has ever had their lunch packed by a parent can attest, is the Little Debbie Swiss Rolls, a mixture of rich chocolate cake and butter creamy filling. Yes, sir. Over 900 million cartons of Little Debbie products are shipped each year, but none of those cartons go anywhere near. Oh, I need, I might need to slide to the corner store, man, or the freaking gas station, man. What? Libby, Little Debbie? Austria or Norway. Blame those rascally additives, Yellow 5 and Red 40. Yeah, oh, Red 40, there it is. Yeah, I haven't eaten Little Debbie. When the last time I ate a Little Debbie cake? Mmm. Man, I mean, I walk past them in the store, but it's like, I don't want one. It's like, you gotta be like, it gotta be right there for me to want it. Like, I don't know. I just don't be wanting it. Swiss rolls. Like, it, it, like, it hits so good when you're a kid, but when you're older, you're like, I don't want a freaking zebra cake right now. I don't know. You probably know what I mean. Contain 32 milligrams of dye per product. And in those quantities, they've been shown to have an adverse effect on children. 
And we're not just talking about causing hyperactivity, although one study See, see, I just said it. Found that cutting all artificial food coloring from diets may be one half as effective as prescribing kids Ritalin. And while we can't prove there's a direct connection between artificial food coloring and cancer, they do cause damage to white blood cells, causing them to mutate after only three hours. Wow. Exposure to these dyes could cause tumor cells to multiply way more rapidly. For that reason, researchers say a high chronic intake of food colorings throughout the entire life is not advisable. Right, if only right. they weren't so delicious. If Surprisingly, only. you can buy Little Debbie's Swiss rolls in the EU, but they come with warning labels advising parents of the potential dangers to kids. You know, like cigarettes. What the heck? Okay, I don't eat Special K at all. Like, at all. I don't when think I've ever had Special K. the words banned breakfast cereal, you're probably imagining one of the countless kid-focused brands of sugary morsels, like the oh-so-delicious Cookie Crisp. So you might be surprised to learn that it's actually Special K, the most boring cereal on all of the earth, that has <laughs> been imagine. banned in Denmark and discouraged in the EU. Wow. How does the healthiest box of flakes on the shelf get banned? While well, yeah. stuff like Reese's Puffs and Cinnamon Toast Crunch continue to enjoy free passage. Ironically, because of its supposed health benefits. In the UK, Special K has been put on blast by the Advertising Standards Authority for exaggerating how much folic acid they pack into portions. Though it's still legal to buy in Europe, Denmark has completely banned Special K since 2004 for all its fortified vitamins and minerals. Wow. Regulators argue that Kellogg's cereal's unnaturally high levels of everything from vitamin A to zinc actually qualify Special K as a genetically modified organism or GMO. More specifically, Special K is swole with the same artificial compounds that studies have shown to potentially pose health risks, specifically to children and pregnant women. In conclusion, you may want to stick with Crunch Berries. Crunch Berries. Steak. Y'all are not taking steak. You're not taking steak away from me. Now, this is too far, man. I'm not going to stand for this. Y'all can take cereal, Debbie Cakes. Pork, you ain't taking steak, man. What? Steak is a staple in America. Come on. You don't need to. Next, right next to burgers. Am I right, man? A transcontinental flight to visit countries that have banned American foods. Just drive up to the Canadian border, flash your passport, and sign an affidavit saying you're not smuggling any steak tartare in your trunk. <laughs> Today, consuming raw meat has fallen out of fashion in the U.S., much like other foods like veal and pate, which don't make you sick, but might make you sad. But while- Bro, who's eating raw meat? I really like- I guess she just ate raw meat. That's insane. Cow and overstuffed goose liver is illegal in parts of America now. Tartare Ugh. is not. See, while veal and pate may be uncool, they are also served hot. Unlike tartare, which is chopped up cold meat straight from the cow. Undercooked or raw foods can lead to an increase in food poisoning and parasitic yep. infections, especially yep. in beef and poultry. Yep. But considering how fancy pants steak tartare is, titanic food one might say, you'd think countries might look the other way. Bro, that is literally a patty. They grabbed it out of the, the freezer and threw it on your plate. Throw that thing on the grill, bro. This will really piss me off. And let the luxury delicacy slide. And for a long time, they did. He ain't even going for it. In Canada, meat has to reach an internal temperature of 145 degrees Fahrenheit, the equivalent of a medium rare steak, in order to be considered safe to serve. But those rules aren't strictly enforced. That is, until recently. Well, how y'all like y'all steak, man? I like my steak. Well done. I know it's like leather. I don't care, bro. I like it well done. I don't want no red. Like, I've seen people bite their steak or burger, and they'll say, Mm, the blood. It's like, it's like what? No, I, mean, I can't. I can't sip on the blood. And then and I know I'm gonna get some comments. It's not blood. It's carbon dioxide. I'm like, I don't know what. What? What? No, it's blood. I don't care. <laughs> in 2021, I know y'all in my head. I like, grow up, Cam. I don't care. Restaurant owners in New Brunswick selling steak tartare were all served cease and desist letters. Good. Canadian public health officials had decided that amid the ongoing health crisis of COVID-19, the last thing their citizens needed was a side order of botulism. Yeah. Get Coca-Cola up out of here, bro. Give us Pepsi. 
Is there anything more American than Coca-Cola? The fizz, the flavor, the former secret ingredient, cocaine. Coke is basically apple pie in beverage form. And it's not just Americans who are a cuckoo what? for Coke. Invented by a pharmacist in 1886 Georgia, Coca-Cola quickly caught on overseas. It was the World War II GI's drink of choice. Pre-pandemic, Coca-Cola had 500 brands in over 200 countries, making it the best-selling soft drink and one of the most recognizable brands of all time. Yeah. But there will always be exceptions. And unlike the other entries on the list, for once, it has nothing to do with health concerns. Everybody knows that Coke is not good for you. Yeah. We just decided collectively that we don't care. No, the countries that have outlawed the brand have done so because of what it represents, a symbol of the encroachment of American capitalism. From 1962 to 2011, the U.S. banned sales of Coke to Burma as part of sanctions against the military junta that ruled the country until 2011. It resumed sales in the country in 2012. Today, Coca-Cola is only unavailable in two countries with long-term trade embargoes with the U.S. North wow. Korea hasn't allowed Coke since 1950, and the wow. bubbly beverage has been banned in Cuba since Fidel Castro seized supplies in 1962. First the prequels, now Coke. Is there anything that can't be ruined by the federalization of trade taxation? Wow. In a twist of irony and uh, lime, Cuba was actually one of the first bottlers of the beverage outside of America. Today, Cuba Cola has replaced Coke as the country's soft drink of choice, though black market sales abound. After all, it is the birthplace of the Cuba Libra, AKA the rum and Coke. M&Ms, okay. M&Ms, the delicious melt in your mouth, not in your hand snacks. Were I don't like M&Ms. I don't like M&Ms. What else he got? I think that's it. Chocolate that won't get your trigger finger all sticky, but you won't find the candy in Sweden where it's banned due to a trademark Dang, it's banned in Sweden. Hey, W Sweden, bro. I don't eat M&Ms either. You feel me? I'm just like you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man, that's the end of the video. If you enjoy a 17-minute video, is crazy, right? Uh, that's the end of the video. If you enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe. Be sure to comment down below how you like your steak, bro. Do you like it well done, medium rare, well done? Do you like or do you just eat it right out the freezer like they try to give it to you here? Um, but yeah, man, smash the like button, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see y'all in the next video, man. Peace.